The chair recognizes the Honorable Member for Central Grand Bahama. and all those watching from across the length and breadth of the Bahamas. Special greeting also goes out to my great people of Central Grand Bahama, who I am eternally proud to represent in this honored house. Madam Speaker, it would not be right for me to start this presentation without sending a very special happy 50th independence to Bahamians across the archipelago and indeed around the globe. I truly believe the Bahamas is God's favorite place on earth. And over the weekend I was educated as I was being made to understand that, I was made to understand that the song, if the good Lord never went on holiday, tell me why he made the Bahamas. That was written by a Long Islander. Now living in Grand Bahama, named Norris Carroll. I was very pleasantly surprised to learn that. I thought it was Nita. Yes, he's an attorney. Yes, yes. That's a plug for the, for the attorneys. We are blessed with the best food, the best environment, and the best people on this side of heaven. Over the weekend, I noticed an electric air of patriotism I have not seen in a very long time, one where it was all about one people. No division, no party, no colors, just one, Bahamas. People were wearing their behemoth colors with pride, and the country was indeed buzzing. And if I could just add to what Centerville indicated earlier, is to say how proud I am that the most popular song in the country, sweeping the radio and social media, was created by a grand behemoth. Yes, grand behemoth, congratulations to Elkin 360 Alton. We want you to know that Grand Bahama is so proud of you. You have the entire country rocking, Bahamas. Bahamas and I, for one, just can't get that, I just can't get a song out of my head. So I hope I don't break out in that song, Bahamas, while I'm making my contribution. <laughs> just catchy, you know? And this speaks to the fact, like Sanderville indicated, that the stones that the builders rejected came to head on the stone. Because I was made to understand that he didn't even make the second round in the competition. It can't be understated how much talent we have in this country, the Bahamas. We must invest in the orange economy and ensure that our people have everything they need to not only hone those talents, but be able to take them throughout the world. The past 50 years was one of strengthening identity as a people and as a culture. And I can't wait to see what God does in the next 50 years. And yes, hoping to God keeping me for that long. Um, freedom. I hope to be around for another 50 years as a young boy. Freedown. Sorry, not free down. <laughs> Sit down. Yes, free down too. We still have a long way to go to realize or operate as a truly independent nation. We are not there yet. Because we are still in a celebration mood, I won't get into the nitty gritty of the course of the parties and fancy dinners during the independence celebration, but I want this new government to know questions will be coming. So you're put on notice. Have those receipts and those justifications ready. Madam Speaker, I want to speak to an issue again that was raised by Sandville earlier and something that we really need to pay attention to. You know, we have given lip service to Madam this house, but I think we must make sure that there is follow-up and implementation of proper protocols. Our job is to ensure legislation is in place to provide behemoths with the support they need in, in, in every area. Seeing the amount of investment we put into such a spectacular independent celebration, our people are asking why the same can't be done for the crucial support services needed in this country. Madam Speaker, it is a fact that we are less than two months away from the four-year anniversary of Hurricane Dorian. And there are behemoths still reeling from that devastating storm especially on Abaco and Grand Bahama. Their lives changed drastically when Dorian made landfall, and nothing was the same for them. 
The journey to recovery and restoration continues for residents, but this effort has not only been the physical rebuilding of properties, but the emotional and mental work of trauma recovery, rebuilding our people. Madam Speaker, we are still in the Titanic Basin hurricane season, so we must remain vigilant at all times. And even after it ends, we must continue to remain on guard because with the worsening of climate change, Mother Nature can and will be merciless. This is the reality that we now face. In light of what we went through with Dorian, I, re I reiterate, it is crucial for us to build our country in terms of roads and infrastructure, but we must also look at rebuilding our people better and stronger, and that cannot happen without the necessary mental support or mental health support system being in place. This trauma caused by Dorian and then the COVID-19 pandemic and all and an eventual lack of access to mental health support have caused significant mental health gaps in this country. We did the right thing in here by passing the Mental Health Act, but we now need to put some real investment behind this whole initiative. It's crucially important that we really pay attention to this element of our society. It's time to put our money where our mouth is. Madam Speaker, permit me to shine light on a major NGO organization in Freeport that caters to this segment of society. The center is called the Resilient Center in the CR Shopping Plaza. This NGO seeks to promote healthy adaptation to challenges and stress by providing comprehensive wellness services and specialized support where needed. I think they've been working with, sources, with the Department of Social Services. The center offers a range of activities and programs that caters to all ages, including educational events, individual and group counseling services, training services, raising awareness, and more. They provide safe programs for children, of, offer outlets for adults, and combat loneliness among seniors. And that is an issue. All of this with just a staff complement of six, along with kind-hearted and dedicated citizens who volunteer their time. And even further, with such limited resources, this group also extends services to the people in Abaco. Madam Speaker, these are private citizens who must be applauded. All the work they do and the passion they put behind it. It cannot be understated how important these wellness centers are to safeguarding the mental health of our citizens. Unfortunately, they are not getting the financial support from corporate Bahamas or the government. Without this level of support, organizations such as the resilient centers are at risk of shutting down. Madam Speaker and colleagues, we cannot let that happen. Currently, the organization has a backlog of some 140 individuals standing outside waiting to be counseled, but the center is over capacity. Madam Speaker, no individuals should have to wait to get help they so desperately need. That is why these centers must be given financial support from the government. It's time for us to bag them financially. Madam Speaker, I know that given the impact of recent events such as Hurricane Dorian, COVID, inflation, and other social health, addressing the mental health of residents has become even more crucial. More must be done by us sitting in here. Yes, we have started the process, kudos, but we cannot stop here. You know, when I visited the center last week, the operator, uh, Ms. Felicia McBride advised me as I walked through the door, there was a group of senior citizen ladies crocheting, making blankets and hats and, and, and tablecloths. And I greeted them and they were all excited. But she advised me that the center is now being supported by this group of senior citizens who take their pension money. Listen to this colleagues. They take their pension money, they buy water, ice, toilet paper, and other essentials to keep a critical center open. These are pensioners. We need to chip in and support them. She's also expressed gratitude to our landlord,
my little butler and sons, who have extended their rent for eight months. They're behind. But my little butler and sons recognizes the importance of this setup being there and has granted them the privilege of extending their, their time. So again, colleagues, we need to pay attention to this critical center and others like it, not only in, in, in Nassau, but throughout the Bahamas, those who are reaching out to build the man and the woman. As recent as yesterday, again, as, as indicated by Centerville, the police reported that they're investigating the alleged suicide of an 18-year-old woman, such a young person to have their life cut short so quickly with so much more living to go. It is the police job to investigate these matters, but it is our job in here to make sure that these matters don't happen by providing all of the support needed for people struggling with their personal demons, for lack of a better word. This is why centers that I indicated above cannot be ignored and be allowed to shut down. And speaker, think about the boating tax. All is not good today. While Bahamians are coping with everyday life, they also have to juggle this backdoor system of taxation brought by this New Day government. I once again echo the concerns of fishermen, boaters, and tour operators regarding the new regulations on the water sports industry. You can now, you can now, you, so you have to be rich in order to afford 20 footer. As I indicated last week during my budget presentation, fishermen are looking forward to August 1st when we all know crawfish season or the lobster season opens up. We know it's a big business for Bahamians to supply local restaurants and feed their families. But these new backdoor fee boat registration fees are killing them. The fishermen are concerned whether or not their businesses are and livelihoods are going to survive. We want to be law-abiding citizens. I think Sinan spoke to that. And they hope to be. But they're being forced to choose between following the law and being able to provide for their families. Instead, Bahamians get this whole notion of this backdoor system of taxation. This New Day government continues to say no increases in tax, but their policies and projections says otherwise. These increases in fees are totally, thanks for agreeing with me, these increases in fees are totally unbearable for a small man that we should be empowering. But by adding these taxes, we are indeed killing them. It is so interesting how the new government has made sailing, again, the national sport of this country, but it's so far out of reach by everyday behemoths. How are we going to make boating more accessible for behemoths now that sailing is the number one sport? How? Certainly not by overtaxing them. Again, we ask, why are we supporting this backdoor system of taxation? Sometimes politicians tend to look at issues at the top level. But what about the rest of the Bahamians, who this will ultimately impact? Now we are seeing this government backpedaling on several issues. Weeks ago, we had the backpedal and said we're going to delay the issue with the departure tax situation. Now, recently, the minister the member for Southern, for South Eleuthero, Central and South Eleuthero recently stated that they will suspend boat registration fees for commercial fishing vessel while we make provisions to lower the fees for commercial fishing boat registration. This to me show that this uncaring government made these decisions without consulting with the major stakeholders. And now when the stakeholders make a public outcry, in some instances, they backpedal and say we will, we will suspend or delay for another day. Well, Bahamas, I wish they would have done this for bread basket items. Pull back on that. Delay that. Oh, yes, on medical insurance, on baby and feminine products, to name a few. Why didn't this New Day government delay putting the taxes on those like they're now doing? Yes, and Barnabas, he's going he's gonna, he's gonna to bring it home. He's going to hammer the point home when he gets on the floor. He will. He will. The door has been opened. You should have delayed that. You should have delayed that. But you know, you're hell bent, bent on tax, 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 tax. Now, now pulling back from these taxes and fishing. Madam, Madam Speaker, I know you're trying to get ready. Exactly. Today, today we're talking about, we're talking about bread basket items and boat. Now, pulling back from these boats and fishing taxes that I outlined during my budget contribution will create 
again, this again wasn't properly thought of. Because I, in my opinion, is going to now create shortfall in your revenue projection. This is a part of your revenue projection, the revenue stream, in your line budget. Now we're pulling back, we're canceling registration fees, we're suspending it. How are you going to make up for the shortfalls? Your budget projections are in problems. You didn't think it through properly. You jumped the gun. You jumped the gun. Now you got to find another revenue stream, and guess what it's going to be? More taxing. More tax, more VAT on the backs of the poor, struggling Bahamians. You did not think it through. You did not consult. You went straight into action. But again, the other question is this. If there's no commercial fishing boat registration and licensing, can these boats be insured? Will they not be inspected for safety? If you're going to suspend the fees, there's no registration. How are you going to get insurance for them? Who's going to inspect them for, to make sure that they are safe for the fishermen and the crew to go on in? Madam right, Speaker, as we now move to make laws that benefit those who sit in this honorable house easier, such as exempting licensing fees, let's seek to do the same for every single Bahamian. We cannot appear to be privileged in here getting concessions while the average Joe is suffering. As it relates to the substantive, substantive Notary Not Public Amendment Act, a simple matter. However, let us seek to level the playing field. Let us not give the impression that we are acting on behalf of the privileged, those who can afford it, and the average Joe. We're not looking for ways to give them concessions also. As I usually say, the official opposition is always here to provide bipartisan support for this New Day government. I'm continually honored and grateful for, this, for the responsibility to be a representative for the good people of Central Grand Bahama and will continue to do my part to advance our country, our country forward, upward, onward, together. And yes, before I take my seat, the world famous Central Grand Bahama Farmers Market will be this Saturday at 10, 7, 9 o'clock at the Royal Oasis Ground in Freeport, Grand Bahama this Saturday. So we're urging all of our vendors, secure your boot. In fact, I believe they all have been secured. We, we, are, we are also, I'm going to get to that too. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm a bit disappointed that I was not selected to be a member of the Grand Bahama track and field team. And we, you know, we are the defending champions. We are the defending champions, and as history would put it, there's a certain member in here who was the first champion in 100 meters and should have been given a bye into the games. I wanted to get on the golf team. They said, no, too late. But that's all right. It's good to see that the good member, I see that the good member from, from Garden Hills is carrying on the tradition. Governments are continuous. And I applaud him and his team, like I applaud the good member from Seabreeze for doing such a wonderful job. You have to give credit to us, due and to the rest of the Bahamas. Grand Bahama, Grand Bahama, we are leading. But I want to tell you, Grand Bahama, it's a slim margin, very slim margin. So in track and field, we got to step it up. And if I was on the team, I could help anchor that and ensure that we get the gold, the gold medal, and secure, because we are now some 20 years holding the championship. We had the champion. And we want to carry it back to Grand Bahama. So I hope that the track team will pull it off. They're capable of doing it. And I hope that the Nassau team is watered down by the athletes who are descended from my island, my Carl and Long Island. Go run for your island, no run for Nassau. Run for your island and give us a chance, a real chance at retaining our championship. But once again, it's one Bahamas, one people. I am happy to stand here uh, representing the good people of Central Grand Bahama and, of course, the Bahamas are large. So Central Grand Bahama, having said that, we'll rest in an hour together here before the one o'clock hour. Thank you, Madam Speaker.